In this portion of the videos, uh, I'm going to continue to give you the electron pushing arrows. But now I'm going to give you multiple arrows. Previously, I was just giving you two arrows at a time. Now, remember, please do not proceed with this portion of the videos unless the earlier portion of the videos has gotten so easy for you that it's boring. If you're still having any trouble with those questions, go back and redo the previous portion of the videos where I was only giving you two errors at a time. Only once that's so easy that it's boring does it make sense to go on to the next section. Okay. All right, so now let's go on. Again, I'm going to continue to give you the electron pushing arrows. Now I'm going to be giving you multiple arrows. Try this problem. Try to draw the resonance structure that is suggested by the curved arrows that I've provided. As always, we begin by redrawing the original structure. I mentioned earlier that when you redraw the original structure, obviously you have to make care to redraw it exactly, not to make any modifications that you didn't intend to make. Well, now that we're getting into more complicated molecules, my experience is that students find it quite difficult just to redraw the original molecule. Um, when you're in a hurry, it's uh, very easy to make a careless mistake even when you're just redrawing the original molecule. So really take your time and make sure you're drawing it correctly. For example, count the carbons. It's amazing how often people will add a carbon or drop a carbon. Well, the surest way to make sure you're not doing that is to count the carbons. One, two, three, four, five. Five carbons on the left. One, two, three, four, five. Five carbons on the left. We got that right. And two carbons on the right. Anytime the structure is at all complicated, um, make sure that you count the carbons to make sure you haven't added a carbon or dropped a carbon. And, um, you know, even that might not suffice. If you find that you're still misdrawing, then you need to number. This is a really useful technique in organic chemistry, numbering the carbons. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Notice that these are not the IUPAC naming numbers. They're just reference numbers to make sure that the carbons on the left correspond to the carbons on the right. Um, what would have happened if the numbers over here didn't seem to match up with the numbers on the left? Then we would have known that we made a mistake as we were redrawing the picture. All the numbers match up, so we know we didn't make any mistakes. Um, how do you know whether you should use this numbering technique? Well, if you find that you are sometimes um, adding carbons or dropping carbons, or somehow I'm changing the structure of the molecule, then you need to number until that never happens. Uh, it's not acceptable to make such a trivial, easy mistake when you're copying the molecule. If you find that that's happening at all frequently, you need to get into the habit of always numbering the carbons on any problem that's of uh, any level of difficulty. Once you get to the point that you never make that kind of mistake anymore, you don't need to number anymore. But most beginning students very, very often add carbons or drop carbons or change the structure of the molecule without realizing it. The only good way to make sure you don't do that is to number every single picture that you make. Again, these are not the IUPAC numbers, they're just reference numbers to make sure that this structure on the left is the same as the structure on the right. So don't be easy on yourself. As you're going through these examples, if you find that you're occasionally, accidentally misdrawing the structure, make sure that you put a stop to that. Um, a good way to put a stop to it is always counting the carbons, and even better, numbering the carbons. All right, now I'm going to uh, erase the numbers. As before, I've also recopied the electron pushing arrows. Okay, now where should we start? Well, we always start with the initial tail. We always start with the initial tail. Is it this one? No. Is it this one? No. This is the initial tail. This is the tail at the beginning of the series of arrows. So we start here. And we ask, where are the electrons coming from? Well, this tail is coming from the pi bond, so the electrons are coming from the pi bond. So we erase the pi bond. Now, because we're at the initial tail, we have to change the charge on an atom. This is the atom here whose charge is changing. Um, it started off neutral, and it's losing electrons. So it ends up with a positive charge. Make sure you don't think that this is the atom that's losing the electrons, because this is not really at the beginning of the string of arrows. This atom is already in the middle of the string of arrows, the, because uh, you can see it's got a tail on its left, but the head on its right. 
this is the atom that's really at the beginning of the string of arrows. It's losing electrons and not gaining any electrons. And now that we've dealt with the tail, we can erase it. Now we go to the head. Where are the electrons going to? Well, this head is pointing to the middle of a sigma bond. We know that means we're making a pi bond. We better draw that pi bond. Since we're in the middle of the string of arrows, we don't change the charge. Now we can erase that head. Now we go on to the next tail. This tail is coming from the middle of this pi bond, so we're moving the pi bond. So we have to erase the pi bond. We're in the middle of the string of arrows. There's no need to change any charges. We can erase that tail. Notice that we're still using the same techniques that we were using previously when there was only two arrows. We work with a tail, then we work with a head. Then we work with the next tail, then we work with the next head. And every time we've dealt with one part of the arrow, we erase that part of the arrow and go on to the next part. Uh, we will still have this head. Um, this head here is, again, indicating the formation of a pi bond. So I'll draw the pi bond. No need to change the charge. We're in the middle of the string of arrows. We erase that head. Now we're at this tail. This tail is showing us that we're moving the pi bond. So we erase that pi bond. We're still in the middle of the string of arrows. Uh, so there's no need to change any charges. We just erase that tail. Now, we finally made it to the final head. This is the final head in the string of arrows. It is pointing directly at this nitrogen. That means that we're not forming another pi bond, we're forming a lone pair. When the head is pointing to a sigma bond, we're forming a pi bond. But when the head is pointing to an atom, we're forming a lone pair. Now, as usual, we're not actually going to draw that lone pair. But because we're at the final head in the string of arrows, we need to change the charge on this atom. Well, this atom started with a positive charge, and it's gaining electrons, so it becomes neutral. Now we can erase that arrow. As usual, uh, we need to check the net charge. Always check the net charge until you're getting all of these right so easily that you don't need to. All right, so here we have a positive charge. Here we have a positive charge. There's a positive one net charge in both pictures. So it looks like we got the charges correct. So here's the correct resonance structure. I meant to erase this number. We didn't need to keep that number around. All right, so now we're learning uh, the method for dealing with multiple arrows. Notice that it's very similar to the method for dealing with two arrows. You start at the initial tail, and then you work your way along until you get to the final head. And we're going to change exactly two of the charges. We're going to change exactly two of the charges. We're going to change the charge of the atom at the initial tail. That was this one, not this one. And then we're going to change the charge of the atom at the final head. We're not going to change the charge of the atoms. We're not going to change the charges of any of the other atoms. We're not going to change the charges of any of the atoms that are in the middle of the string of arrows. Because every single one of these atoms in the middle has electrons coming in and electrons going out. This atom has a head coming towards it and a tail going away from it. This atom has a head coming towards it and a tail going away from it. Even this atom here is losing this pi bond but gaining this pi bond. Um, so none of the atoms in the middle of the string of arrows are changing their charges. Only the atom um, at the initial tail and the final head are going to change their charge. When we're doing a complicated problem like this, it's especially useful to use the redraw and modify technique. Don't try to draw the picture um, straight um, uh, from scratch. And it's especially useful to redraw all the arrows, work with one part of the arrow at a time, and erase each part of the arrow as you proceed.